I'm Rantasmo, and it's turkey time. Both Chasing Amy and Gili are centered around a romance between Ben Affleck and a woman who identifies herself as homosexual. I am speaking, of course, of... A lot of people really like Chasing Amy, while Gili is widely considered to be one of the worst cinematic disasters in history. Personally, I'm not a big fan of either of them, but believe it or not, my issues have more to do with their execution than their premise. You may have heard of something called the Kinsey Scale. It's a not uncontroversial concept, which basically says that sexual experience is not a binary or even trinary system, but rather a continuous spectrum between exclusively heterosexual and exclusively homosexual, with many varying levels in between. The implications of the Kinsey scale are such that while words like lesbian, gay, bisexual, and straight are very useful for people describing their sexual orientations, at the end of the day they are just words, and they come with all of the limitations that that entails. You've probably heard the phrase, no one chooses to be gay, which is true, no one ever chooses to whom they're attracted. But when it comes to the words we use to describe our individual sexual orientations, in a way we do kind of choose those. Say, for example, that a person exists here on the Kinsey scale, almost but not quite at the very gay-most end of the spectrum. Is it accurate to describe them as bisexual, even though they're almost exclusively gay and might only be attracted to someone of the opposite sex once or twice in their lifetime? Or should they be labeled with a broader term, such as queer or homoflexible? Well, it's ultimately not our responsibility to decide that for them. It's up to them to choose an identifying word or words based on what they feel best describes them. That's not to say these identifications are never a tad suspect. My current counselor says you're a heterosexual with complications. And mind you, when someone identifies as gay or lesbian, it's usually not an invitation for people of the opposite sex to hit on them, and vice versa for straight people. There are also theories of sexual fluidity, which say that a person can have different sexual identities at different points in their lifetime, which, for obvious reasons, are extra controversial. But what I mean to say is that a romance between a self-identified gay person and someone of the opposite sex is not necessarily an utterly absurd concept in theory. In fact, the subject is dealt with fairly deftly in the Russell T. Davies series Bob and Rose, but I can't really say the same for either of these movies, wherein the mere notion of bisexuality never even comes up and it's implied that Ben Affleck is just some sort of lesbian whisperer. You're a lot more likely to see this trope come up when it's a woman who switches teams. Sexual fluidity is arguably a little bit more observable in women, but I think when you consider certain straight male fantasies, there's a lot of potential for exploitation here. Chasing Amy at least makes an effort. And to be honest, my issues with it mostly have to do with the Kevin Smithiness of the script. I just don't think it's very funny. You f***ing tracer! Your mother's a tracer! And maybe it's a personal taste thing, but Okay, Kevin, we get it. You like comic books and hockey and Star Wars. And yes, it's a product of its time, but it's pretty embarrassing to think that adults in 1997 really needed to hear this whole idiot's guide to lesbianism conversation. Why girls? Why men? Girls feel right. Well, that's how I feel. You know, I've never really been attracted to men. Oh, that's what lesbians are. Aren't you really good friends with a gay guy, Ben Affleck? Has the whole how come gay person thing really never come up before? Even so, you do kind of get the sense that Alyssa is struggling with her sexual identity, and how to reconcile it with this newfound attraction that she never really expected or wanted. We also briefly meet her weird, biphobic lesbian friends. Doesn't this tube of wonderful have a name? Holden. Yeah. Yeah. Which, unfortunately, is a thing that sometimes happens. With Gili and J-Lo, it's more like, I'm not sure lesbian means what you think it means. It's turkey time. Huh? Gobble, gobble. Ha <laughs> ha, gross. And this happens because, I don't know, because Ben Affleck whines enough. But I really like this girl a lot. You know what? 
She's a stone cold dyke. A f***ing untouchable, unhavable, unattainable brick wall f***ing Dicosaurus Rexi. Enchanté! Oh Ben, you had me at Dicosaurus. This movie really is as bad as you've heard, and not in a way that's entertaining. It just makes you feel bad for the actors. I have to go with the Baywatch. And yes, that is the guy from The New Normal. In conclusion, watch Bob and Rose. The genders are switched, but in terms of characterization and being written well, it's a good example of this type of story done right. Because I think most types of stories can be done right. Even the ones with Ben Affleck.